Maybe you could promote the cited laws to encourage cultivation. Comprehensive plan dating back to 1991 is full of pro proposed conservations of green space. Maybe you could ask the council to upgrade the comprehensive plan proposed conservations to ordinance statute. St I'm sorry, to ordinance status. In other words, to make ordinances out of the proposals uh, stated in the uh, comprehensive plan. I will mail you copies of, of the proposed conservations when I have time. And then in the P, thank you, and, P, and then in, in the PS, I say, and this is why I really why I'm here. There's another more urgent strategy to prom, in promoting home, is a, a more urgent strategy for, for preserving green space is to promote home composting of home perishable waste, including home excreta. Such home composting would not only encourage horticulture and thus pres the preservation of arable land, but would reduce shipments of Georgetown sewage sludge to the Sadieville landfill, where it is probably, I should maybe should say possibly, the cause of the offensive odor that's now the subject of the front page story in a news graphic. Uh, the, 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 uh, the magistrate Hofst Hofstetter, what, Rick Hofst, what's his name, Hofst? Hofstetter. What is it? Rick Hofstetter. Hofstetter? Hofstetter. Yeah, he's uh, quoted there on the front page uh, of the news graphic, uh, uh, his, his, his complaint about the odor at the landfill. And if, basically, what, if, if we flush a, a, a water closet in Georgetown, a lot of people don't know, but the, the, the contents of that flush are eventually going to wind up in the landfill. I just, Mr. Wilhite just told me uh, that, that the public works trucks haul sewage sludge from the sewage treatment plant here in Georgetown to the landfill. What, on a weekly basis? Would that be right, every week, Mr. Wilhite? That's been a part of our operations for some time, some time Steve. Is, is there an additional point you'd like to make? Well, how, how frequently do they ship sewage sludge? I don't Never know. We'd, we'd be glad to find out for you, but we do it routinely, and we have for a number of years. Yeah, so it's it's part of your operation, like yes. you say. Yeah, right. So um, let me just finish up here, where it is probably cause of the, possibly the cause of the offensive odor. Mobile Estates is now a big opportunity pr to promote dry management, including composting and trench composting of home excreta, and thus of horticulture there because of the, it, it's such an opportunity because of the existing sewage, sewer problems there, sewage treatment problems. Thank you. Uh, one other comment, this is uh, from a news story published uh, May the 11th, 2008 in the Herald Leader. It says, experts are rethinking food supply. It says, uh, for now we know the new world agricultural order that which is bound up in what globalism they're revising their their opinions they say that peasants are supposed the way it is now peasants are supposed to leave their unproductive farms and strive for middle class prosperity while food production is left to agribusiness in the countries that farm most cheaply and efficiently in other words everybody who's not not working for the big man with the big tractor is supposed to be working in a factory, and, and that's why, if you ask me, that's why we have all these problems, including the landfill. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list for public comment, Mr. John Douglas. Thank you, Mayor and uh, City Council. Uh, I'm coming before you again on my annual uh, request as part of the Scott County Georgetown NAACP for our annual Martin Luther King March. Uh, we were asking for the uh, council to approve the march on Monday the 15th, starting at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, we will be gathering at the Cottage Street right in front of the uh, Student uh, Center and marching from there down to Military, turning left, going from Military to Main Street. We'll march down Main Street all the way to Broadway turn left on Broadway and come back down to get to Carter Street again and finish up where we started at. And that will be starting at 4 o'clock on that uh, Monday, on this coming Monday. So I will ask 
council if they would approve to do that. Thank you. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, just a comment, John. Uh, uh, we, Robbie Barber and John Douglas and others uh, have, have helped me better understand this event. And uh, historically, I was one of the folks like many in our community I assumed that the Martin Luther King Jr. March was an activity of the NAACP hmm. and yeah. that's the way it happened uh, in working on last year's event I became aware that Martin Luther King Jr. March is intended to be a community event the city and the county have a responsibility in making this a community event, and we have a great partner in the NAACP and a great partner in Georgetown College and a great partner this year with Faith Baptist Church, which is where the program will be immediately after the march. So what, what I've been educated as to and what I want us to continue to understand is that this really is the community celebration of Dr. King's life, and we should approach it that way. And we appreciate the help of the NAACP in making that happen. Uh, and after the march, uh, then there'll be a program at Faith Baptist Church. Uh, we're not going to try and make everybody march from the college no, to no, Faith no, Baptist no, Church. No, that's why we do it normal. We're afraid we might lose a few on the way. No, you wouldn't me this uh, week. But, but we'll complete the march, and then uh, we'll have buses, John. and We we'll have some okay. vans that will be available to take those that don't want to drive over mm -hmm. to Faith Baptist Church. Folks that would like to do right. that. Right. And then, then uh, prior to this event on Saturday uh, is a – a different event, the Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast. Right. The NAACP is hosting their the annual NAACP breakfast. The NAACP does host the breakfast. Right. And uh, the city has purchased a table. And if you'd let us know, we'd be glad to have you uh, at the table <coughs> for, uh, for that event on Saturday. We we'll appreciate that from the city. So with all that said, is there a motion to approve the march? March, yes. On the 15th <laughs> at 4 o'clock. Yes. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. I just didn't call for the vote. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Mayor, well, put me down for the breakfast, please. Well, thank you. I, the mayor's already stole my thunder to talk about Saturday. So we we'll hope to see all of you there for the breakfast, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. That's what 9 o'clock at, to. Breakfast, to uh, at the breakfast, and it'll be at the uh, First Presbyterian uh, Conference Center. Yep. And that little annex. Right. Annex. Right. Annex. 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 Right. Annex. Right. Annex. Right. Annex. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And that completes public comment, unless there's anyone else in the audience. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Are we being televised tonight? Or just vote? Are we just like verbal? I just got to no, know we're not. Okay. So. I thought we were, but. Uh. We do have two TVs up. <laughs> we do, yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, <there's> <laughs> <laughs> As a part of mayor comments, I was going to update on, oh, I'm sorry. on the status of some of this, <laughs> but I was not aware that we weren't getting out okay. of that. I was not either. I thought we were on a regular schedule, but we'll straighten that out. Okay. Are we in a position to record? Oh, yes. Yeah. We got that. Good. Then we can still place the meeting on the YouTube channel. We just can't yeah. be live. So we'll, we'll at least get that far. <coughs> right there. On the right way. Uh, yeah, that couple of things. Uh, first, to say Happy New Year to the council, and uh, delighted to start uh, uh, this particular year. It's it's the final year of a council term. It's the final year of a mayor's term. It's the final year of a clerk's term. So, uh, we all have a similar existence in the, in the next 12 months. Uh, but I, I did want to point out the changes that we've made to the room uh, in the month since we've been together. Uh, we were able to uh, to get rid of all the flaking plaster and uh, just make it a bit more presentable. Uh, it's been painted a, we hope, a less depressing color than it was before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it had been there a long time. Uh, and where necessary, where some of the ceiling tiles were stained, uh, they've been replaced as well, just so it was, it's as bright as we can make it. Uh, 
Both TVs are up, uh, but we're in that final stage of getting them wired together. So the TVs are not functional tonight. We anticipate that they will both be functional at the next council meeting. Uh, we're also going to replace these uh, real dingy old shades uh, with a similar shade that will be white and we think look a lot cleaner uh, for the room. Then we think we're in a position to have the carpet well cleaned, have the chairs cleaned, and we can get by uh, for as long as we can. Work on the, we're going to tweak some artwork. Shade. Get that. Yeah, nothing's gone back up yet uh, except the, the Great Seal of Kentucky. Uh, also got four new working ceiling fans. Yeah. Yes. The one that goes like this. <laughs> Finally, now it works. Mm -hmm. So we, we can move we can move some air. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a, a bit of a work in process. Uh, the, the blinds will be changed and the TVs <coughs> will be made functional and we'll have our cable connection back. It looks great. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks very good. Wonderful. Very nice. Uh, Thank you. Um, let's see, just wanted to, uh, just a brief comment or two about the numerous capital projects that we have planned for the coming year. Um, we, we, we got to spend some time during the holidays with the finance committee and Stacy, and we got to pick apart some numbers and, and look at some various uh, options and ways that we wish to approach our capital needs in the coming year. Uh, and I'm not prepared for a full presentation about how these numbers look tonight, but I can tell you that the, the, the feeling of, of the Finance Committee and the administration is that we are going to attempt to do as many of these capital projects uh, out of our fund balance as we can. We've worked diligently for the last three years to build our fund balance. Um, I don't know that we can do it all with fund balance, but that is the way we'd like to start and then manage these projects as carefully as we can with an eye toward uh, doing them out of fund balance and uh, cash reserves of the city so just wanted you all to know that that we've spent a lot of time on that conversation and uh, while I don't have a detailed presentation for you that will be the the type of thinking that the committee and I are going to bring to you over the next couple of months as we approach these larger projects uh, also just uh, because it fascinated me because uh, I've been doing this either at the council level or the mayor level long enough to where sometimes I think I know everything that's going on in the room. I really don't. And, <laughs> and after the last meeting, I learned some things that were news to me. Uh, and, and I thought it would be helpful for all of us. There was a little bit of, uh, of, of not confusion, but awkwardness over the vote on, on one or more board appointments. So I had Andrew sit down with me and we looked at the law on abstentions and recusals and how they, how they should work. And the thing that I learned, I always thought the council members had to vote or were supposed to vote. Uh, apparently you can recuse yourself for any reason, for anything, at any time and not vote if you choose not to. That was news to me. I didn't think that was the case, but it is. So what would happen? It was, yeah. So what uh, would happen if five people refuses to vote and three of them voted for it? Would it pass? No. Okay. Uh, if if anyone intends to recuse themselves, okay. they should actually leave at the beginning of the conversation, okay. not be present for the conversation, not participate in the conversation, but completely leave the room. Okay. Because when you recuse yourself, you're literally removing yourself from the meeting. You are not present at the meeting during those deliberations, and you do not count for a quorum. Okay. And if we lose a quorum because of abstentions, okay. there's, there can be no action. Okay. Okay. So now our, what's an interesting dilemma, and I don't think we'll ever come to this, but our ethics ordinance says that if you have a conflict of interest, you should state what that conflict is before you leave the room. Mm -hmm. Well, 
just playing devil's advocate, if if you didn't have a conflict, but you just didn't want to vote, you wouldn't have to say anything. Except I recuse myself. Now, I, you all can decide for yourself what's appropriate behavior, but apparently you have the legal right to vote on anything you want or not to vote on anything you want. If people choose to abstain from a vote, then you stay present in the meeting and ultimately your vote is counted with the majority. So your vote is counted. You don't cast it. It simply goes with the majority if you choose to abstain. Uh, but you can recuse yourself for any reason at any time, but you should leave the room before you do it. So that was my revelation. We all learned something, didn't we? We did. I knew you could hmm. recuse. I just didn't know you had to leave the room. I knew you could recuse for any reason, but I didn't know you had to leave the room. I think the idea, the idea of a recusal is to... <laughs> The idea of recusal is, is to completely remove yourself exactly, from the meeting yeah, so that even that. your physical presence yeah. doesn't have an impact on other council yeah. members. Yeah, anything you say. Okay, and we've already talked about the uh, breakfast in the March. Thank you, John. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, item six on your agenda is mayor's comments, and it is an executive order appointing, reappointing two members to the code enforcement board last year when we created this board for the first time we gave their members staggered terms so these are the folks who had the original one-year term and it's up they're eligible for two terms on their own okay. yeah if you would <clears throat> Local governments of Scott County Joint Pool Code Enforcement Board, effective upon approval by the appropriate legislative body, Billy Perkins is jointly reappointed by the mayor of the city of Georgetown and the Scott County Judge Exec, get to the local governments of Scott County Joint Code Enforcement Board for a term to expire December 31st, 2021. Effective upon approval by the appropriate legislative body, Bill Stark is jointly reappointed as alternate board member by the mayor of the city of Georgetown and the Scott County Judge Executive to the local governments of Scott County to Code Enforcement Board for a term to expire December 31st, 2021. This executive order requires City Council approval pursuant to City of Georgetown Ordinance Number 3036. Motion, Mayor. Thank you. I'll second. The motion's been made and seconded. Uh, if there are no questions, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, GMWSS. Bob's got some professional services to buy tonight. Don't be by surprise. He's going to get up here this early. Good evening, everybody. Uh, likewise, we're starting our capital projects for 2018, and we want to procure engineering services for two of those projects tonight. Both these items were approved by our board on December 19th. First is approval of a purchase order in the amount of $14,500 for professional services to Palmer Engineering to provide engineering services for design, bidding, and construction administration for the 2018 GMWSS City Water System improvements, which will be Ute Trail, Inca Trail, and Seneca Trail. And our budget contains a line item for the, our annual water line upgrades. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, if there are no questions for Bob, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mayor, can I ask a quick question yes, that sir. relates to this? Mm -hmm. the, this was the, these were the professional services, I guess the design, overseeing the, the installation. But what about the installation cost? Well, we won't bid that out until we until have Until after you have the plans, yeah, put we'll, out we'll for bid. We'll have okay. to come back with was that. There, do you have an estimate on that, though? Or do you not want to really say? I hate to say. Yeah, that's all right. The engineers haven't designed it yet or come up with the, the feet. It, okay. It'll probably be less than 150. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's going to be just real straightforward. Yeah. Easy digging, easy to get to. So, okay. yeah, that'd be my best. We'll guess. be very disruptive to the folks that live on we'll, We try to keep it to a minimum. We'll be through some backyards or the uh, front yard? No, at least be in the front. Okay. We're on the edge of the street. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. That's it, Mayor. Thanks. Okay. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. I don't think I got a motion or a second. Yeah. Million. We did. 
two of us. We, oh, we did it. I'm sorry, yeah. I was already on the second one. You were already <coughs> on the second one. We did it. Moving so on. So did we adequately vote on it? <laughs> we did. Okay. We're good. <laughs> Go ahead, Bob. All right. Approve a purchase order in the amount of $121,440 for professional services to Bell Engineering to provide engineering services for design, building, construction administration, and inspection to replace approximately 1,700 feet of sanitary sewer line south of wastewater treatment plant one, and our budget has a line in the amount of $100,000 for this project. Now this was in the backyard. <clears throat> this will be, it's in the backyard I down by it. the creek. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mayor, I'll make a motion for approval. I'll okay. second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any questions for Bob on, on the uh, Bell Engineering? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, and just uh, for council's benefit, uh, and, and our local press has been following this very closely. Uh, we continue to have uh, a dialogue with the attorneys representing uh, the trailer parks mm -hmm. in an effort to uh, exchange information, just trying to get some common understanding about what each side's trying to accomplish. So that dialogue is ongoing and just wanted to let the council know that. Uh, Andrew, Bob, and I, and Judge Lesby touch base pretty regularly about it. So, uh, uh, as, as some, if, if there's something to report, we'll, we'll certainly bring it to you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, under item eight, uh, City Attorney, we've got we've got uh, several. We've got a couple of annexations, uh, actually three annexations and two zone. Uh, change ordinances. Uh, you may recall from the last meeting that these are uh, th these were very straightforward and and pretty cut and dried uh, uh, on those two. Uh, we'll we'll just work through these. Let's see the 167 Industry Drive. Okay. Yes, the one we we already had. A we already me, reading. Uh, let me let right, the, the, the sorry. Sorry. Chuck. Excuse I'm going to excuse myself because I had sold this property. <clears throat> we had first reading uh, at the last council meeting of this annexation yeah. ordinance, uh, but it turns out uh, planning and zoning had an intention that if they're going to annex these several little parcels that they all needed to come into okay. the city. Uh, and this first reading corrects that situation so that each of the four, three, three, three parcels. smaller parcels mm -hmm. uh, are being annexed. The first ordinance only referred to one parcel. So this is more of a housekeeping effort uh, to get all three parcels. So we'll have first reading <coughs> of that. An ordinance annexing into the city of Georgetown certain real property containing 8.66 acres located at 167 Industry Road in Scott County, Kentucky. Summary 1. Annexes into Georgetown city limits by written consent of the property owners in accordance with KRS 81A.412, 8.66 acres of property on located at 167 Industry Road in Scott County, Kentucky. 2. Provides for an effective date upon passage and publication. Public are introduced and read for the first time January the 8th, 2018. Thank you. That will constitute first reading of that ordinance. We'll schedule second reading for, for our, our next council meeting in January. Uh, could we invite Mr. Bradley back in? That the building. When he excused himself, he went on off. <laughs> you may have. <laughs> Uh, Mayor, the next one, if it's 1100 Lexington Road, I'm going to recuse myself. I uh, yeah. have a contract on that property and an option to close. We, we'll be glad to let you exit. <laughs> then we'll talk about it. One in, one out. Likewise. <laughs> Uh, item B is second reading of annexation ordinance uh, 1100 Lexington Road. 
uh, sponsor as much time. An ordinance annexing into the city of Georgetown certain real property containing 1.22 acres located at 1100 Lexington Road in Scott County, Kentucky. Summary 1. Annexes into Georgetown city limits by written consent of the property owners in accordance with KRS 81A.412, 1 1.22 acres of property located at 1100 Lexington Road in Scott County, Kentucky. 2. Provides for an effective date upon passage and publication publicly introduced and read for the first time December the 11th 2017 publicly read the second time January 8th 2018 motion mayor second mayor thank you mm -hmm. motion has been made and seconded that the second reading of the annexation ordinance be approved if there are any questions we'd be glad to take them and if not I'll ask Ms. Hoffman to make the roll <clears throat> Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Tackett? Yes. Mr. Showalter? Yes. Mr. Mrs. Singer Erdley? Yes. Mrs. Butcher Conway? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the annexation ordinance passes. Item C on your agenda is second reading of the zone change ordinance for the same property at 1100 Lexington Road. An ordinance changing the zoning classification of certain real property containing 1.22 acres located at 1100 Lexington Road in Georgetown, Scott County, Kentucky from A1 to B2. Summary. I mean, it's the official Georgetown Scott County zoning map to show a change in the zoning classification for certain real property consisting of certain of a total of 1.22 acres located at 1100 Lexington Road in the city of Georgetown Scott County Kentucky from A1 agricultural to B2 highway commercial which amendment is contingent upon the passage of the ordinance annexing the property into the city limits provides for several ability, repeal of inconsistent ordinances and an effective date upon passage and publication Full text of this ordinance is available for examination in the Georgetown City Clerk's Office, 100 North Court Street, Georgetown, Kentucky, 40324 at www.georgetownky.gov. Introduced and publicly read for the first time December 11, 2017. Publicly read the second time January 8, 2018. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. If there are no questions on the zone change ordinance, we'll call the roll. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mrs. Butcher Conway? Yes. Mrs. Singer Erdley? Yeah. Mr. Showalter? Yes. Mrs. Tackett? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Thank you. Uh, item D on the agenda is to first get reading. David. Oh, yes. Why don't we get David? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's going to leave him out at all. <laughs> I almost forgot you. David, both of those ordinances failed. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one right there. Yeah. You, needed a, you needed a vote, David, to get it through. Yeah. And you weren't here. <laughs> we needed a tiebreaker. Uh, <laughs> now, both ordinances actually did pass concerning 1100 Lexington Road. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, item D, first reading of the zoning ordinance for 110 East Showalter. That is the... Uh, um, Building that holds MRM precision <coughs> engineering or precision machining. Sorry, it's uh, the, the large metal building when you turn in there on uh, Marketplace, maybe. Um, no, not Marketplace. Market, Market Path. Showalter. Off, Market of, off of Showalter into the shopping heat center. Kentucky yeah. Heat Treating. Yeah. yeah. What do they they're, want? What do they plan to do? They're wanting to. Um, it's a simple change to go. They want to go from I1 to B2 so that they can have a utility trailer on the site because I-1 doesn't allow that, but B-2 does. Hmm. So. It's actually a less intense it is zoning a, it is in, yeah. in my mind. Yeah, yeah, no, this it's is, appropriate. This mm -hmm. is appropriate for the It's consistent with the comprehensive plan. It was passed unanimously by the Planning Commission, so. Okay. It's just then, open for more jobs. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly right. Well, then then uh, if the clerk's ready, we'll have first reading of that zoning ordinance. An ordinance changing the zoning classification of certain real property containing 3.014 acres located at 110 East Showalter Drive in Georgetown, Scott County, Kentucky from I-1 to B-2. Summary. 
amends the official Georgetown Scott County zoning map to show a change in the zoning classification for certain real property consisting of a total of 3.014 acres located at 10 East Showalter Road in the city of Georgetown, Scott County, Kentucky from I-1 Light Industrial to B-2 Highway Commercial. Provides for several bills to repeal of inconsistent ordinances and an effective date upon passage and publication. The full text of this ordinance is available for examination in the city clerk's office, 100 North Court Street, Georgetown, Kentucky, 40324 or at www.georgetownky.gov. Introduced and publicly read for the first time January 8th, 2018. Thank you. So that will constitute first reading and we'll undertake that at the uh, our second meeting in January. Uh, also, uh, item E under city attorney is first reading of the Smith Cox annexation mm -hmm. ordinance correction. So about two years ago, uh, there was a piece of property uh, on Cynthiana that, that we annexed. Um, and when we did the legal description of the property, uh, when we sent it up to the Secretary of State, the Secretary of State said Some, something's not right. And there was there was either an overlap or there was an issue with boundaries. Harold's here if you wanted to chime in, but more or less we we consulted with um, the surveyor, and the surveyor went in and said, "I know what's wrong." Wrote up a, a new description. So this is essentially us just amending that ordinance to correct the call points essentially i mean it was just an issue of the call points being wrong it's still the same piece of property it's still the same annexation there's not any shift in boundaries it's just a correction to make it all match up is that yes. human error we essentially amounted to a combination of the a previous annexation ordinance and the common and the resulting U.S. 62 uh, when, when they did U.S. 62 go, going to Cynthiana, that new road out there, the combination of the two resulted in some overlaps. We had used in uh, I guess under the previous Secretary of State's ordinance, you did not have to be as precise mm -hmm. about lining things up. Now they're very technical, and they want the GPSs to coordinates to all line up. Uh, there, my attempts at trying to play surveyor didn't work very well, so we had to, we, we finally enlisted some professional help and got everything lined up. The Secretary of State blessed it, and we just want to go back and make the ordinance read to be correct with what we're ultimately going to send to the Secretary of State for approval. Got it. Sounds good. So we have first reading. An ordinance amending Ordinance 15-011 to correct the map and legal description of property annexed into the City of Georgetown. Summary 1. Corrects the map and legal description of property annexed into the City by Ordinance 15-011. 2. Provides for an effective date upon passage and publication. Publicly introduced and read for the first time January 8, 2018. Thank you. So, uh, next time we'll have first reading, or second reading of the annexation ordinance. Second reading of the <coughs> zoning ordinance and second reading of this annexation correction. Thank you. Uh, item nine on your agenda under city engineer, uh, we had indicated to you uh, previously that we've uh, planning and zoning and our engineering staff is trying to do a better job of getting streets accepted in a timely manner so that we close loops and get those processes done. Thank you all. See you guys. Uh, so with that in mind, planning and zoning has been working on some of these updates and we have a municipal order tonight approving the dedication of streets in Lake Forest. An order accepting streets within the Lake Forest subdivision units 2 and 3P as city streets and including them on the official city street map. Whereas the Georgetown Scott County Planning Commission staff have reviewed the plats and inspected the streets and found it to have been constructed to the standards necessary to be adopted as a city street. Now, therefore, it is hereby ordered by the Georgetown City Council that the following streets are hereby accepted by the city and included in the official city street map. Name, Unit 2, Cabinet Slide 10 to 07, Date 7 to 2010, Number of Lots 24, Residential. Unit 3B, Cabinet 10, Slide 208, Date 7 to 2010, 10 Residential, and 2 Homeowner Association. The following is a summary of the street inventory, Lake Forest Drive, 966. Feet. This is the main street through the subdivision. Ryan Court, 122 feet, cul-de-sac to east of Lake Forest Drive. 
Rose Street, 268B, dead end street to east that will connect to future subdivision, temporary platted turnaround on lot number 105. Affinity Drive, 114 feet, short section of the street that continues to the west of, to Harmony Ridge subdivision. Total length of street is approximately 1,470 feet or 0 0.28 miles. Thank you. Motion. Motion. Second. 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 Thank you. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, Andrew and Tracy will answer them. Uh, if there are none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, item B on your agenda uh, requires a bit of an explanation uh, from me. And uh, this is a municipal order approving the dedication of streets and Payne Crossing. Uh, Payne Crossing is where we... Uh, We had a communication issue, is what I'll call it at this point, uh, where the uh, new developer of the subdivision thought that they had no alternative but to tear down some of the decorative signposts that some, some subdivisions have upgraded to. Um, we're trying to figure out how to unscramble this egg. Is basically what we're trying to do. Uh, the the uh, developer received information from the Planning and Zoning Commission about some of the signs having to be changed, uh, and the developer responded by putting a, a chain around them and yanking them off. We saw that. We saw the pictures. The yeah. They were <clears throat> damaged and, and put into the back of a truck. Uh, we've actually... Uh, We've got several subdivisions where this is the case. Every city does, where there are upgraded street signs, and we need a mechanism for how we're going to work with those. We think it's pretty simple for new subdivisions going forward. We can simply uh, have that HOA or that developer sign a contract with the city that whatever the increased cost from our normal sign to the upgraded sign they want, that they pay for. Uh, and then if they were also if they will also agree in the future if signs need replacing due to uh, reflectivity standards or they get knocked down in an accident that they provide the inventory or the parts for us to put those back up with Aren't that's what supposed most to be breakaway too that was mm -hmm. that was in there yeah, too that when we the person contacted us. Uh, and that those are the types of arrangements that Lexington has done. Lexington has done with Firebrook and other subdivisions. We know these exist all over the place. Uh, the difficulty with this one, uh, and we want to sit down with the homeowners association and some of the affected property owners, because uh, we may have we may have some liability here to help make this whole again. Uh, the the. Uh, What's troubling to me is that uh, these decorative signs were in place for 10 years and we didn't have a problem with them. So I'm not sure what caused us to all of a sudden have a problem with them. Well, it was the dedication of the street. <laughs> the dedication of the street is what brought that review up. But we, we, we think that uh, we need to do some more work on this situation and bring back what our proposed solution is. We've got some homeowners that are probably upset, and we have an obligation to sit down with them and help work through this issue. Yeah, I think we all got an email from them, and yeah. they were really upset and <clears throat> just trying to, you know, have proper communication. I think we'll really yeah, help. I got a phone well, they've been up 10 Haley years. I'm like, sort of like to be like grandfathered in, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, one would, one would think that that would be a reasonable point of view, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but we've got a little bit of a... We'll, we'll work our way through this, but we're going to have to work with the residents to uh, to get it done in the most responsible way. Yeah. But we think that we have some obligation uh, yeah, to help sure. fix this, and we're going to be trying to do that with the, with the homeowners. Mayor, we were going to take on that responsibility in neighborhoods that didn't have the the decorative signs, right? We were going to pay for the signs, do the installation ourselves, Ab correct? Absolutely. This is only the upgrade cost. Right, right. And when you say the upgrade cost, I assume that's just material only, not labor. Yeah. Because Public Works is going to be doing the work. Well, so. I guess we're, we're we could. Frankly, David, we're, we're so early in this, we're still getting all those yeah. prices. Okay. Well, that's, that's something to be considered because labor's, you know, 
it's relevant. <laughs> I don't know how big it is, but it's relevant. And if we're going to pay for the labor in one area, you would think it would be consistent throughout. I would anyway. Yeah. And Robert said we had five years. Is that right to, to complete this upgrade? He said it was going to be spread out over a five-year period? That's what we've been told all along, David, and that, that our plan was to try and replace 20% of them a year. Yeah, yeah. So, so there was some method yeah. to the madness. You got, you got two issues there. You got, we were given five years on retro reflectivity standards. Five years? Yeah. And but, that started probably a while back. Well, it did. And we were given seven years on, like, uh, on other standards, like the size of the stop sign yeah. and things like that. That clock started to run, yeah, some time ago. Yeah. Now. We will come back with some policy that we can apply consistently, but trying to come up with that going forward is easier because we've right. got we got models from other cities that we can say, okay, here's what works, and I I think those same models can work going backwards. The tougher question is, what do we do about all that's there, mm -hmm. and and who's responsible for what, and mm -hmm. how much does it cost? And then it gets particularly complicated on on these these particular truck full of things that got damaged when they were yanked off and yeah. what was our role in creating right. that to happen. Right, right. So we we know that we need to be involved in some conversations. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually uh, surprised that I predicted when we went over the agenda today that we would not make it down to item 9B before we talked about this. Uh, yeah. I figured we'd talk about this during public comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about, I mean, there's communities where the decorative stop signs are required mm -hmm. is that a thought is that something we want to consider on any new subdivisions coming into Georgetown I'm just asking I mean it you know. I think we're glad to uh, I don't know that we want to require the, the fancier but we're happy to accommodate developers yeah. and homeowners mm -hmm. that would like to have that look yeah. in their subdivision yeah. and we Even haven't anticipated that well they have that option yeah. they have that option mm -hmm. yeah I, I see it as an upgrade as an improvement i think most people do yeah. particularly when the uh, street signs match mailboxes mm -hmm. and it's got a good look down the street so we've interrupted that yeah <clears throat> but uh, having said that, we, we are prepared to approve the dedication of the streets in Payne's Landing, uh, even motion. even though. I'll make a motion. Thank you. I'll second it. Payne's Crossing. Motion's been made and seconded. Payne's Crossing. Payne's Crossing. Yeah, Payne's Crossing. Not Payne, Payne's Landing. Oh, did I say Payne's Landing? Payne's Crossing. Payne's Crossing. Right church or on pew. Uh, <laughs> with that, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, let's see, item 10 on your agenda is a dispatch uh, a municipal order approving a mobile upgrade. And Jason, as I understand it, this is something that is separate from our other project, but something that you need at this point. Is that yes, correct? Yes, sir. The, the, uh, the, the upgrade what we're requesting for, sir, is um, the last time the mobile MDTs in, in the cars and also in the fire trucks and ambulances. This is a mobile upgrade from um, 7.0 to 10.0. It's like a three, obviously a three digit upgrade. Uh, it hasn't actually, our mobiles, mobile MDTs have not been upgraded since 2008. Hmm. So that's that's what the, the funds are already, already been allocated into the budget. We're just now moving on it to, to get it um, get finished. Okay, and uh, just we're going to go ahead and vote on this, uh, Lieutenant Whitaker. But uh, you're also getting much closer to the RFP. Yes, sir. Uh, on the larger radio bid, is that right? Yes, sir. The, um, the RFP, the final draft should be out this sometime this week, hopefully before Thursday. Need a motion, Mayor? Uh, yes, ma'am. Motion. Thank you. Second. Second. You got them everywhere. You got them everywhere. <laughs> Third, fourth, and fifth. <clears throat> okay. And if there any, uh, if there are no questions for Jason, then uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, let's see. Item eleven on your agenda under public works. Uh, we have a municipal order approving. 
the purchase of another tractor trailer load of Herbie's. Mm. Now, uh, talked good. with Stacy this afternoon. This particular truckload of Herbie's was not budgeted. So we will have to come back with a budget amendment uh, after this uh, when we true things up and, and correct this. But between, between growth and second Herbie's and replacing broken Herbie's, we've gone through a truckload a little quicker than we thought we would this year. So uh, that will be something Stacy's noted for a budget up, update, but we do need to go ahead and approve that municipal order. I'd like to make a motion. Thank you, motion's been made second. and seconded. <clears throat> and if there are no questions, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Well, thank you. That is the end of, of my budget. My budget. Uh, <laughs> Your budget. You wished. Budget. You wished. <laughs> That's bad. What do you call this? An agenda. Agenda. An agenda. Mayor Prather. An agenda. May, I, may I ask you something? Since sure. we just talked about public works, and um, I have been just bombarded, and I really need your help with this, please. All right. sir. I've been bombarded by people probably from around Thanksgiving until just as recently as a couple of days ago, stop me everywhere and ask me about the status of the curbside recycling. What what can I tell them? Where are we, I mean, as far as, are we getting some figures together to see when that might come to council for a vote or how, no, how close are we? No, we're on the same path that we were. Mm. Uh, it, it has not changed. Uh, we, we've done the, we're, we're making the single, uh, the single stream deliveries to Lexington. I, I know and, that, yeah. And, and still working on that. I do that. tell them that. I do tell them that, that we are accepting things at the curb, I mean, at the recycle center, and that it is going to Lexington, and that we did, you know, visit Chuck and Polly and I visited and the, David. and David also, the, the center. But we, you know, we first started talking to MSW in the fall of 2015. And it took about a year for them to come up with a, their findings and everything. And they just keep asking me when, when there'll be a curbside situation. And I don't know what to tell them. And I was just hoping you could help me out with. I guess okay, that's what I was trying to do. Put me on the spot. That's what I was trying to do. If you'll let me finish. Yes, sir. When, 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 we were, when we took the, the uh, recommendations of the consultant and worked them into our solid waste ordinance, yes, sir. we indicated that we were going to give that at least eight months to go through that process to see if those budget savings were real or if they weren't real. Yes, sir. And we're still in the middle of that time. Okay. So that has not changed. Well, that is exactly the process that we said we were going to follow. Well, so I'm, 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 I'm not, I don't understand your confusion. Well, it, the confusion is what to tell the people. Yeah. So what, not, not, I, not, I understand the process. I've been involved with the process. You then know, I would tell them what the process is. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just, I thought maybe we might take a look at how some of that, those things had changed with the changes that we did make and maybe check with Stacy and see how the numbers were or something like that to where. We, we can do that at any point. It, it's just when we started, we, we, we knew that we needed some period of time. Yes. And I thought it would be at least six months. So. Yeah, I, would, I didn't know about the eight months or six months. So that, that helps knowing that to be able to. Now, this is exactly, I thought, where it's supposed to be for the process. I, I'm sorry that people are, are not well, accepting that. But I'm just, this is exactly the process that the Public Works Committee laid out. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm telling them to take their things to the center, you know, that we're mm -hmm. taking these things to Lexington and they just are anxious to have it, yeah. that container outside their house yeah, is exactly. basically what's, what I'm hearing over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And I just, since I've been talking about it, I just kind of wanted to, I'm saying it's a, it's a gradual process and we have to, you know, we have to work this out with the numbers and we have to figure it out. We've we took our survey and like eight, and I told them that, mm -hmm. 80 something percent of you all that, that were involved in the survey were for it. And, and we're just pushing on and trying to get it as fast as we can. And I just didn't know, you know, where we were as far as, you know, if, if we were two or three months away from being able to assess the financial situation and, and find out where we were, you know, I'm just trying to have answers for the public. That's all. Sure, sure. And, and I, th I think we're, we're, uh, we're getting there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Hopefully budget time, right, Mary, we can look mm -hmm. at it. Well, I'm, that would be in that time zone that we were looking at. That would be an ideal scenario. That's, that's what I was telling her. We were talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, but let's see. Uh, we're, we're down to council comments. Uh, well, I just had mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to. On this you, I made I'm you start this. with me this time instead of in with me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's uh, just, yeah. you've been bugging me, and I just yeah. wanted to ask. And thank you. You've given me the answer I yeah. can pass on. Yeah, so that's what we needed. Thank yeah. you. So. Okay. Polly? No. Marvin? Yeah. Uh, not a whole lot. Just wish that this council the best of the year that we can have. I thought we had a great year last year as a, mm -hmm. as a group. You know, we so don't too. always agree, but we try to not be very disagreeable, and I appreciate that. And mm -hmm. uh, just hope that this year comes up be just as good. Yeah. Ditto. Me too. I agree. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Mary, I have a question for Andrew, and, I, and it's probably an unusual one, but I, I asked a question with a bit of a level of frustration. The, the stockyards, um, when I drive by now, I see that they've cut down a lot of trees. And some of the trees are in the fence row, and some of the trees are on the state right of way. I guess, is it a state right of way or a federal right of way on I 75? Federal. And we're talking about a few hundred feet of trees. And, and I know when you go through planting zone here in Georgetown, and I would think in Lexington as well, mm -hmm. they try to keep some of the perimeter, perimeter yeah. canopy. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm saying to myself, well, they got their plan approved. They did all that they wanted to do. They're open. It's January. The leaves are off the trees. Now they're cutting down a significant number of trees, dragging them off. The right away on I-75? I mean, they're right on the fence row. But some of them are actually over the fence, not on their property. I don't know exactly where the property line is. You know, those things kind of vary a little bit. But mm -hmm. it kind of makes me want to call somebody in Lexington, you know, at planning and zoning or... I don't know. Maybe hey, the newspaper can get involved in this. Uh, hey, Dave. <laughs> or Steve. Uh, uh, David, actually, when I went to one of these events, there was there's a tree person in Lexington yeah. that you could call. By. I know. But I know, but I noticed that, but, too, because it was just kind of overnight. Planning zoning requires those things yeah. to be in place. You know, when they look at that plan, they sign off on that plan. There's like an existing canopy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a question. You may. Well, this, this required a very significant move by the Fayette County Board of Adjustments. And I would yeah. think that there were a lot of conditions tied to that. I would too. That Board of Adjustments. Mm -hmm. that, that's in Fayette County right there. Yes. Right? When you're talking, yes. That's what I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. It's nothing yeah. that we control. Yeah. Okay. We were hoping, as everyone knows, to be able that. to pick up some of the sewer. Yes. You can't control it. And obviously that didn't happen. That was a little bit control. disturbing. So I don't know. It just it just bothers me that they it. they cut them all down and opened up the stockyard <laughs> view. No. And it's no. not like somebody needs to drive by and see the stockyard and say, I need to stop mm -hmm. in there, you know? Right. I want them to do well, but. <laughs> right. They're doing well. You know, yeah, it's not right. like Swifty <laughs> down here. <laughs> well, here I think that's a reasonable <laughs> question. Someone <laughs> that can check on For the someone. Can. <laughs> I we know who that someone <laughs> is. We, can, we know people. You know, do. I don't know. Do you, am I out of line? Am I, am I, you know, does anybody? Well, aren't they putting a restaurant in there? They yes. probably already have it. Yeah. Already have. Is it a nice in that area? where you go have a steak? Yeah. That kind of restaurant? Well, I'd say they'd be steak, yeah. probably. But maybe why they're trying to draw attention to it? Yeah, sure. But if you built that restaurant here in Georgetown or any other community, you're going to be landscaping the heck out of it. I'm glad you're sick. Huh? That is true. You know? <laughs> what? Yeah. Good point. That's it. All right. huh? I just wanted to commend you all about Derby Estates. <clears throat> that uh, everything's moved forward. I think you're almost finished, if not finished. And I ran into a homeowner the other day at Kroger. <laughs> you know, we always do. We run into people, and um, they said that they've uh, moved right along, and it looks like it's going to work. Good. So I just <laughs> wanted to say thank you. A vote of confidence. That's all? Yeah. Chuck? Well, I had a question, but we moved really fast on the vote for the Herbie, but I just had a question. I'm just curious. Yeah. Out of all those new ones, how many of them are actually new buildings? How we many ordered, of them are We actually? ordered 500 Herbies. How many of them are actually new accounts of new buildings, like extra Herbie, extra? You know, I, I kind of asked Robert about that today, and he did not have that detail from the shop. And he said he'd get it to us. Even a rough roundabout? Mm -hmm. 
So I would, when, when he gets us some, some rough information, I'll be glad. I just wondered if it was an expense for new revenue or if it was just a... It's probably easier to just show, go into the records, get with GMWS, GMWSS and say here in the last X period is the number of new accounts we have. I don't know how easy it is to tie those new Herbies to new accounts, but it could probably get you easily a number of new accounts from GMWSS. And the other thing I think would be interesting is, is how many people have opted for a second Herbie mm -hmm. since we talked about that so much. It'd be kind of interesting to see how that's flowing. Yeah. The other thing was I wanted to clear up a little bit of information that was put out a minute ago on the recycling. Uh, the report was not that 80% of the people supported it. It was 70% of the people who took the time and effort to respond were supported it. Okay? <laughs> the consultant made it clear that if you did it voluntarily, only about 8% people would do it. So I just wanted to make sure that that was, that was made clear. Thank you. And that, I'm it. You're good? There's nothing else to come before the council. We will stand adjourned. Good council meeting. 702. <laughs> That's well, you might want to write that one down.